Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm sorry I haven't been releasing videos because I got sick. I think it was just like a really bad case of hay fever, can you believe? Because, like, it was really sunny at the start of the week and all the plants were going, hey, it's spring, and now it suddenly got cold and, and I'm feeling a whole lot better. Also got, you know, Pfizer shot, so I'm sort of part of the way there on for, on for getting better. Anyway, all this means the space stuff was still going on, um, and... I think I wanted to give a quick rundown of what I think are the cool stories this week. And we obviously have to start out with Ingenuity taking flight on another world. Ingenuity, the Mars helicopter, also known as Ginny or Lil Choppa. In fact, we had Arnold Schwarzenegger himself offering some encouragement saying, Get to the Choppa! So it flew on Monday night or Tuesday, Monday morning. And again, it flew on Wednesday, wait, Thursday morning. Initial flight was up to two meters, a little bit of a rotation and then a landing and the second flight has been up to five meters with a little bit of a translation and more rotations and then a landing. And both those cases have shown that the drone is controllable so they'll be expanding their flight envelope over the next few launches. We've seen a lot of images coming down, I mean they were basically running the mast cameras in very high frame rate mode. I mean, like, they were looking for video frame rates. And it was, I'm not, it's not like high frame rate cameras, but they were looking for fast, as many frames as they could get. So we have videos of this thing lifting off, performing its operation, and then landing. And, you know, you might think, okay, that, that's great, it can go up and down. But, you know, this is a fully controllable drone, and we're just learning to fly in the rarefied atmosphere of Mars. It's not like a, a drone that you might buy with like four independent static propellers. This is a drone which has two concentric uh, coaxial, sorry, uh, propellers, and they have individual adjustments on the blade pitch possible so they can actually maneuver like a real helicopter. Uh, so yeah, just demonstrating this working is a fantastic step forward. It's historic. It's, you know, first, well, okay, the latest claim to be the first powered flight on another planet, although people will talk about other variations. Hey, technically, you know, that descent stage that flew off, that was doing powered flight after it landed the lander. Well, whatever, this is a helicopter. Don't take away from its glory. Lil Choppa rules Mars right now, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, the other experiment that was cool on Mars is Moxie. Uh, and that's been, while the rover's been sitting around waiting for Lil Choppa to do its thing, it's been pumping power into an experiment called MOXIE. And that essentially is making oxygen from the carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars. It takes carbon dioxide, puts it in an electrolytic cell, and uses power to break it apart into oxygen and carbon monoxide. And obviously the oxygen is a very good thing for astronauts to have around. Carbon monoxide you want to keep away from astronauts. But this is just demonstrating this works. That is a nice step forward. Obviously, we knew it worked. We might encounter some problem on Mars. And right now, this is very early in the mission. This MOXIE experiment will be run at other times during the mission to see if the cell performance changes, to see if dust gets in the way or causes some other problem. So seeing that it starts up is a great step, but it's not the end of the story by any means. I also am a fan of the notion of using oxygen and carbon monoxide as a rocket fuel because carbon monoxide burns. And if you can manufacture rocket fuel on Mars without having to bring along water, that actually simplifies a lot of potential operations. So activity on Mars, historic, great, really cool Photoshop. Elsewhere, of course, the big news has been politics, right? And sure, we had Bill Nelson's uh, like con confirmation hearings for administrator of NASA. And that's just been a big senatorial love-in where they're just saying, Bill, you're so great. I'm glad to work with you. Oh, you're so great. I'm glad that I worked with you. Blah, 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 blah. There's been a couple of hints that maybe they'd like Bill to do something or other about the fact that SpaceX are the only people getting contracts these days. Um because they come from, senators come from states that don't have SpaceX facilities. I'm sure we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. But more importantly on the political side is, once again, Russia is saying that it might want to no longer be part of the International Space Station. And this isn't really the first time that it's happened, but it feels a little more real this time. 
you know, Russia now actually has multiple modules that are that are working on that could be a standalone station, but also they're now in agreement with China to do stuff. So I, I think this is still largely a play to see if they can get more money from ISS partners because you know Russia was originally brought into the International Space Station project largely by you know Bill Clinton in a sort of post Port, you know, after the Iron Curtain fell and Russia was formed, there was a real feel in Washington that we needed to stop uh, put Russian rocket scientists from going and working for the highest bidder, who might be North Korea. So by giving the working with Russia to really stand up a very good space program surrounding the space station and also Russia's Mir station, they. Uh, found a way to keep the scientists employed and keep them doing good things, which I'm a big fan of. And, you know, the last uh, decade, when, when there's been no space shuttles flying, Russia's made a lot of money from uh, launching US astronauts to the space station. Now, that's disappearing. It's time again to look, what can they do next? And one quote very specifically from Putin basically said, we, we'd like to find a way for ISS partners to pay us for maintaining our section of the space station. I'm sure something will happen. Uh, I don't think they're leaving anytime soon, but maybe. You know, I think it's still in the US's interest to have Russia on the space station. Anyway, um, moving forwards, of course, since we're talking about crew, just this morning we had Crew 2 head off to the space station. That's uh, Shane Kimbera, Megan MacArthur, Akito Hoshide, and Thomas Peskett who all stepped into Dragon Endeavour, which was the one that was originally used for Demo Mission uh, 2. It was boosted into space with the same booster that pushed Crew 1 into space, and they also launched it just before dawn, so there's some fantastic pictures from the East Coast showing the rocket trail as it headed up into the, the sunlit skies far above. In fact, I think there's some cool photos from Disney World from the Star Wars-like world there, uh, which is really cool because, of course, Falcon is named after the Millennium Falcon and having it fly over the star, the you know, the skies of whatever... What's the place? I can't remember. The, their Star Wars world. It was also fantastic to see... You know, they, of course, they do the crew walkout, which I got to see because it was before midnight here, but I really had to sleep through the rest. And they're saying goodbye and... We, we see Bob Benkin there, who had been on Demo 2 with his kid, saying goodbye to Megan MacArthur. Because, of course, Bob and Megan are married, and when Bob was flying on Demo 1, she was there with the, <laughs> the kid saying goodbye. They had a lot more masks. The Model X is, by the way, their license plates have been changed to, you know, like, reuse, recycle, um, I forget, repur- <laughs> I can't remember. Um, which, of course, was partly a reference to like Earth Day, but moreover, it's really a reference to the fact that they are reusing and recycling these, this rocket. They're reflying it. This is the first time we've seen crew re launch on a reused capsule and a reused rocket. So that's a big vote of confidence from NASA on that front. Uh, also, like, so they've, they're going to spend, like, six months in space. They're going to dock on the first uh, front and then uh, the other dragon resolve resolution. I don't know. They're going to come home. So they, yeah, they get a busy flight ahead of them. They're going to be adding in the first rollout solar arrays. The uh, Thomas Peskett's there. He is obviously going to be there because the European robotic arm will be coming up with Nalka, hopefully, in the middle of the year. So that's an important thing for him to do. Uh, yeah, the, you know, they, they've got a whole bunch of stuff going, <laughs> going on, which I can't remember. It, it was it was kind of nice to see, certainly, to wake up to the nice pictures of the, the launches in the sky. Uh, of course, this means that we had a very short time at the space station where there was room for, the, for there to be a second capsule there. And Boeing, with their Starliner, they think they're getting closer to flying, and they've talked about flying potentially in September. Apparently, like, so the problem with Starliner is they've got to find a time when there's room at the space station for them to park long enough to demo it. 
And with Dragon, Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon now both docking to the uh, international docking adapters, they're running out of opportunities. And it sounds like they're now concerned that for their uh, September launch window, they might not have room on the range for their Atlas to be set up because of other conflicting Atlas requirements. Oh, last week, by the way, ULA also announced that they're going to be launching the first block of Kuiper satellites. That's Amazon's answer to Starlink, and they'll be launching them on the Atlas V. Again, why are they using the Atlas V when Amazon is owned by Jeff Bezos, who also has Blue Origin. Blue Origin builds the engines for the Vulcan, but the Vulcan won't be ready. They're not going to be launching on the new Shepard because the new Shepard isn't ready. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what what will go there, but I suspect they'll only have a limited number of flights on the Atlas before they switch to another launch vehicle. And Blue Origin last week, they launched their suborbital New New Shepard. Wait, New Glenn was their orbital one. New Shepard, uh, they did a demo again, up and down, but they actually had crew sitting on board for the, the wet dress rehearsal portion. And then just before launch, they got out and moved to a safe distance. And then there was a ginormous long hold for weather conditions. So it wasn't that realistic. But yeah, this has been, it's, it's been inordinately busy. And I actually want to go back and talk about many of these things in more detail when I actually have time. But I just sort of wanted to make a video to let you know, I'm still here, still kicking, still alive, and still flying safe.